Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel. And today I'm working on a snowblower that I showed how to change the recoil rope on. Now I'm going to be replacing the coil that's inside the blower housing. Now, in addition to the steps that's on the other video, I'm going to put it up here in my, uh, my box here. Just, just like click it. Video. It'll take you to the other video. That video will tell you how to take off the lower half. I'm going to show you then after you've done all that, how to take off the upper half. And I'm talking about the body. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Now, this isn't difficult at all to remove. Um, what you're going to do is take a Phillips screwdriver, remove this bolt and washer and this bolt and washer on this side. The way you do that is you're going to take a, a boxed in 7 16 inch wrench and hold the nut and the washer that's underneath from spinning and then pull these two out. Once you do that you're going to take a half inch socket and remove the three bolts that are holding on the discharge chute to the uh, rotator assembly. There's this one here, the one in the back, and then the corresponding one here. They're held in with carriage bolts that are square headed. And just remember when you put it back together, you want the smooth side in. It helps with the discharge. Okay, once you got all that off, this is ready to come off, all except for this arm here that goes down and controls that chute. You can see when I turn it, it turns the chute. So what I'm gonna do is remove this bracket, 7 16 bolts with 7 16 nuts. So I'll go ahead and pull that off, and uh, this whole assembly then just pulls out of the slot that it's in. Now, I didn't mention, I had already removed these three screws. They're 5 16 headed screws to pull off this dash panel. And what that does is allow the lip to come free that it's being held on with, with that panel. You can see that comes off, and then uh, as far as that control arm, it just pulls out of its slot. You can see there, nothing fancy. Go ahead and take all that off and set it on the side. Ooh, look, it's naked. Naked as a jaybird. At this point, I can put the fuel cap back on and start removing some nuts that are required to get this gas tank loose. Uh, of course, if you've watched my video already on the recoil repair, you already see how this comes out, so I'm not going to show how that's done. But I will show you that there's a 3 8 headed bolt here that's relatively long and one that's here and basically those two hold this metal dash onto the frame or the handle of the snowblower. So I'm going to remove those two and when I do you can see in here the carburetor linkage how it works. So what we're going to do is make sure that you see that hole that it goes into that you get that back in because once this panel comes off, the choke's coming with it. All right, with those two bolts loose, you can see, you can just pull this up and sort of out of the way. Now there is an ignition switch that's connected with wires. We're gonna unplug that from the ignition switch uh, and just let it hang there. So once we do that, this whole panel will be able to be just laid off to the side uh, and out of the way. All right, once you've got everything apart, the tank off, the dash off, you can see the primer hose is still hanging onto the carburetor. Don't break that. I've disconnected the ignition switch. The rope is kind of stretched out. There's only a few bolts that you have to take off at this point to remove the blower housing from the block. You can leave the recoil on, but there is a bolt that goes through the recoil mount that also holds the blower housing on, and I'll show that to you. But first, let me tell you about this bolt right here. That comes off. This bolt right here. That comes off. There's another bolt just like this one on the opposite side out of camera view. You take that one off. And then I'll get the camera here and I'll show you a couple of other ones that you got to be concerned with. All these are 10 millimeter headed bolts. Pulling this shield down, which just, just snaps underneath the axle that runs the wheels. You go under here, you'll see that bolt right there needs to come off. It's right by the starter. And then, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but you need to take off this bolt here. And that will remove the blower housing. All right, I want to make mention that whenever you take all these bolts off, like I said, there's the one here that was on the blower housing, the one on top for the blower housing, the one on the opposite side that's just like this one. And then the one that's underneath, which we really can't see right now, that's by the starter. All those bolts are going to be this length. 
However, whenever you remove the one that goes through the recoil, it's going to be this length. Remember, this short bolt goes through the recoil and then through the blower housing and connects to the block. So put that off to the side and realize this is different for a reason. Now that you see all this apart, you can see the coil, finally. Now I went ahead and did a lot of troubleshooting to realize that this coil's gotta be bad because I've gone through a bunch of different ignition modules and they only work for a short time and then they fail. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this coil and I suggest you try to find one used. The reason is talking about $190 for the coil. And the sad part is, is the ignition module, you can buy a universal one for about $15, but you should really have the ignition module that came with the snowblower, and that thing's running about $190 also. So let's go ahead and remove this coil, and I'll show you how to replace it. All right, so the two bolts that hold the coil down are a five millimeter hex head, and uh, remove the two bolts that hold the coil to the block. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I did want to point out that you may want to take a picture of this so you know what it looks like uh, before it comes off, but this bracket here, this wire strain relief, um, will go through this mounting bolt for the coil. And whenever you remove the coil, everything's going to unplug at this point. You'll see that there's a wire that's connected to the coil they can be unplugged right here. So that's what I'm gonna do is unplug that wire. And now the coil's free. At this point on yours, the uh, ignition module is not gonna look like this one. And it's going to be plugged in also. It's just going to be uh, a simple plug-in. It's gonna look like this right here. And you can see it's got the plug that uh, we unplugged that was going to the coil. And then this here is the ignition switch assembly that gets mounted to a bolt in the blower housing. So this is going to be unplugged and out of the way. And you may want to unscrew it. It's a couple of Phillips screws from the blower housing so you can get all that out of the way without having any problems. So now we're going to mount the coil. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the magnets, which there's basically three of them, um, I'm going to uh, rotate the engine away from those magnets. Now I'm going to get the coil, I'm going to place it in position, then I'm going to place a card like this one, which is only 10 thousandths of an inch thick, or 0.25 millimeter. And that's going to allow me to mount the coil and have the proper air gap that's required. Now, in this case, I have plenty of these cards. I'm going to cut this to the thickness of this flywheel because it's a little bit different. If you don't know by now, this is a Suzuki four and a half horse engine. Any of these Suzuki engines, the mounting is going to be exactly the same way as what I'm showing you here. So let me go ahead and uh, cut this card down to make it thin enough to go in between the uh, magnets and the coil armature and the flywheel and we'll tighten it all down. All right, because this coil's armature is so spread out, let me show you on the old one. You can see here that one card won't do it. Um, it almost does it, but not quite. Now you probably could get a pretty good gap going th that way, but what I'm going to do is slide a piece in on this side just to make sure. Now what you want to do is bend a little bit of the card up like this so when you rotate the card doesn't go with everything. Okay so I have both cards in there and now what I'm going to do is try to hold all this in place as I rotate the magnets into play. As soon as you get those magnets into play though they like to try to grab onto all this. I've got the air gap set. I've got these cards in place. Um, they are not being pushed up into the coil. The magnet's holding it in place. You can see if I move the flywheel at this point, see how the magnet's moving the coil also? Everything's good. Um, there's a little card underneath this side with that perfect gap, and same here. So let's go ahead and tighten this down. Now at this point, before I tighten it anymore, I want to check and everything still feels really good. It's, it's free, the gap's still there, everything's good. These two nuts, these two bolts, they were pretty tight in here. They were not loose, so you may want to put a little bit of a turn on each bolt to make sure that it stays snug. 
All right, now that you've got that done, what you're going to do is rotate the flywheel and pull those cards out, which that one comes out this way, and this one's going to come out the other way. So there's the two cards. They did the job. You can see they kind of get beat up, but that's why I have plenty of them. Now the gap is set. Okay, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and assemble this ignition coil so the wire is easier to manipulate. And then this up here is going to be bolted back down uh, whenever we bolt uh, the bracket back down for the uh, blower housing. So let's go ahead and start re-mounting everything. And again, it's just the reverse of everything that we did. So there's not a lot that I'm going to show you here. Everything's going to go back on. The blower housing is going to go back on. You're going to reinstall the bolts that hold the blower housing to the engine block and the head. Remember that short bolt goes through the recoil. And then at that point, I'm going to mount this ignition box onto the blower housing and we'll try it out to see if we got spark. So let's do that. Okay, so I got it all back together just to show you what it looks like. The ignition switch back up here. The bracket goes to the blower housing that goes around the primer bulb that goes to the carburetor, the hose that goes to the carburetor. Then the uh, wire goes through the bracketry. It does like a loop and it also gets grounded at this point to the top of the engine block from the ignition switch. Basically what it is is this ignition switch when you turn it off it grounds through the wire that's going through this bolt it grounds the whole ignition assembly. That wire comes down it goes through a wire loom kind of does a loop thing and goes into the igniter box. In the meantime the coil that we mounted the wire comes down, you've seen where I connected it to the uh, uh, ignition module and it connects there, does sort of a loop and of course the wire terminates inside there also. So at this point all I have to do is put all those plastics back on and it's just the reverse of what I showed you. There's nothing very difficult about it. Other than that, everything's straightforward. So let me go ahead and bolt all of it back together and uh, we'll try it out and see if it works. All right, so we got it all back together. I'm going to go out here and try to start it. This is going to be the first time it was started since all those repairs. So let's see what happens. So there you go, it's still running strong out there. It's a good idea to go ahead and run this thing for a little bit because these coil failures, they basically fail after they get hot. Um, it's not a normal thing. Usually whenever a coil goes out, it just goes out. But in this case, I think it's because of the extreme temperatures that these things see. This one, whenever it gets warm after being really cold or out in the cold, it has a tendency to fail. I, I'm just not sure why, but it's fixed. There you go. Now some of the steps, I tried to be a little bit more thorough than necessary and other steps I might have skipped a little bit. If you have any questions, you can send me a comment. I might know the answer on it. Uh, I appreciate you watching my video. If you like this video, click like or subscribe. And also check out my other video on this snowblower and others and repairs that I've made and some other small engine stuff too. 
Again, a couple of the things that I used in this video, I'll put links down below. And uh, if you want to buy them, go ahead and click. I suggest you try to find used, though. I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Bye.